Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about functools.partial, uh, which if you're familiar with functional programming, it implements what's called currying. I'm going to explain what all that means and show you some examples. Uh, so let's jump into it. All right, so to get started, I'm just going to make a very, very simple function. Uh, let's just do add as an easy example, uh, where we'll have a int and, or a float and b float. And we're going to return a float, and we'll just return a plus b. So very, very simple function. Uh, and just to get started, t.py add 5 point and 10 point, and we should get 15 point. OK, cool. So this is a very simple function. Uh, the idea behind currying in functional programming is it takes a function and some parameter set and combines the two together and returns a new function where that parameter set is pre-populated. Um, so you might, you might imagine a function that's called like, uh, make adder and that's actually, we're going to need callable because we are going to be returning a function. Uh, so this adder function is going to take some value and then make a new function, which going, is going to add that value to it. It'll make more sense when I write the code. <laughs> so let's say, um, a as a float, and this is going to return a callable and that callable is going to take one parameter one float parameter and return a float parameter. So up here, this this um, you know this one up here is callable uh, float float returning a float. Um, so you can see that we're taking uh, this two floats input and turning it into a one float input. And the way we can write this is by having an inner function um, adder inner, which takes a float and returns a float. So this is the same signature as this callable here. Oh, I forgot my colon. Uh, I forgot it again. <laughs> and this can do return add a and b, um, and then return adder inner. And uh, let's say we wanted to make an add five function. We can do add five equals make adder of five. What this is gonna do is it's gonna bind a to the value five, create a new function enclosure, which has direct access to this, this five here. Uh, and then, you know, any parameter that's passed into that new function will be added into here. So if we do this and we rerun this file, we call add five with 10, you'll see that we get 15 back. And of course, if we use 10 as a float, we get 15 as a float. Uh, so this has done what's called currying. It is currying this particular parameter here as the first argument to add. Um, oh, there's actually a much simpler way to write this. Instead of having this inner function, uh, we can actually rewrite this just using a lambda. Return lambda b to add a b. Um, so this this lambda expression is the same as as this code here. Um, this might be this will be a little bit easier to read from like a functional programming perspective. And of course, it's using lambdas, so that's more you know functional programmery. Um, but yeah, this this works exactly the same as that. So if we do add five with ten, uh, we get fifteen. But you might say you know this this uh, this boilerplate is a little bit <laughs> a little bit obtuse, I would rather be able to kind of do this automatically. And fortunately in Python, there is a function in func tools, which kind of automates this for you. Uh, so if we do import func tools, and so what we can do here is we can do add six equals func tools dot partial. And the way partial works is it takes the function as the first argument, and then the arguments that it's going to stick into the function from the left-hand side. So it's going to fill from the left-hand side over. Let's actually show that by doing a uh, print here, dot args a equals and b equals. Um, so it takes the function as the first argument, and then any values it wants to fill in from the left-hand side over. So we can actually do you know, six here. And if we rerun this function, we call add six on 10, uh, you'll see that we got a filled in as six because that's what we specified here. And the function and parameter that we had here got filled in as B. So it, it kind of curried the A into there. And of course the function works, it returns 16. Uh, you can actually curry both of the arguments. It makes no sense here, but sometimes you might need a function that takes no arguments and does some side effect. And so you can do like, you know, returns 20 equals fun tool. This is a silly example, but um, add, you know, 10, 10. And so if we run this and call returns 20 uh, with no arguments, you can see that that 10 and 10 got filled in there. Uh, now note, you might not always want to fill from the left-hand side. Sometimes you want to fill you know, from the right-hand side or using named arguments. 
Um, and the way you can do that is, uh, well, also sometimes these might not be positional arguments, they might be named only arguments. Uh, and you can solve that problem by using named arguments in functools.partial. Partial add, so let's say we did b equals 10 um, or seven, right, add seven. <laughs> and so if we do add seven with 10, you'll see that it passed 10 into a and passed b out of order. So it kind of allowed us to reshuffle the arguments here. Um, and I actually, I actually recorded this video twice because I was muted the first time. Okay, I'm not muted this time. Um, I actually learned something very, very um, surprising to me in that if you specify b again here, so b was, was partialed as seven, uh, if you specify b as some other value here, it actually overwrites the existing value. So you can, you can kind of uncurry a named argument. This feels like a bug to me, but I don't know, I guess it's intentional and it's, it's documented this way too, because I went and I went and checked the docs after my first recording of the video, and um, uh, yeah, it overrides keywords because it kind of splats them together like this. Uh, but this was very, very surprising to me. Um, but anyway, that's that's functools.partial. There's also functools.partial method if you're dealing with, you know, class class uh, class methods, or not class methods, just methods on a class. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.